Here we're gonna look at a nice problem from the 2019 Nigerian Math Olympiad. So it involves two sequences of numbers and showing that one of those sequences is always a perfect square. So let's first define x sub n by x naught equals zero and x one equals one, and then we have the following two-step recursion. So x sub n plus two equals three times x sub n plus one minus two times x sub n. Next, we'll define a companion sequence, which we'll denote by y sub n, by y sub n equals x sub n squared plus two to the n plus two. And then our goal is to prove that y sub n is always a perfect square. So I think maybe the quickest way to do this is to somehow find a closed form for our sequence x sub n. And I'm gonna do that with generating functions, although there are a bunch of other ways that you could maybe do it too. So let's maybe go ahead and set capital X of T equal to the sum as N goes from zero up to infinity of X sub N T to the N. In other words, it's the generating function for our sequence X sub N. So I wanna point out that this looks like X sub zero, which is zero plus X sub one times T. So that would just be one times T plus X sub two times T squared plus X sub three times T cubed and so on and so forth. So we're not gonna worry about what values of T this converges for. This is really just a combinatorial tool for figuring out a closed form for this sequence. Okay, so next up what we'll do is take out the first two terms from this sum and then we can apply this recursion. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. I'll just take my capital X of T down here, take out my first two terms, so that would be zero and T, leaving us with T plus this sum as n goes from two up to infinity of x sub n t to the n, like that. Next, since we're starting at n equals two, I can re-index so my index looks like n plus two instead of n, and that'll actually help us apply this recursion. So here this is gonna be t plus, now I'll have the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of x sub n plus two, t to the n plus two. So there I just replaced n with n plus two. Notice that changes my starting point from two to zero. Okay, next up I will apply my recursion. So I know by the defining characteristic of this sequence that I can replace x sub n plus two with three x n plus one minus two x n. So that's exactly what I'll do. But then simultaneously, I'll split this into two sums and factor out a certain power of t from each. So let's see what we get for that. So we'll have t plus, now I'm gonna write this as three t. Now I'll have the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of x sub n plus one t to the n plus one. So that would be like from this first term, notice I took a three out, and I took a power of t out. And I did that so that my index matches my exponent. Now I'll do the same kind of thing for the second term, but I'll take out a t squared. So that's gonna leave me with minus two times t squared, and then I have the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of x sub n times t to the n. Now we'll notice that this last term over here is in fact just our generating function. So this is our capital X of T. So we've already written our generating function in terms of itself. Now we wanna look at this sum and notice that via a fairly simple re-indexing, we can realize that this is also our generating function. First off, we'll replace n with n minus one. That'll change all of these n's, n plus one to n. But that'll change my starting point from zero to one. But luckily, the zeroth term is equal to zero, so I can just add that starting term back in, and that means I don't have to change this at all. Okay, then I can see that what's left over here <clears throat> is another copy of our generating function x of t. 
So let's see what we've got. So we've got capital X of T is equal to T plus 3T times capital X of T minus 2T squared times capital X of T like that. I can easily solve that for my capital X of T. Let's see what that gives me. So that'll give me my capital X of T is equal to T over one plus three T minus two T squared. Now that gives us some motivation to factor that denominator. So we can factor that denominator into one minus T times one minus two T. Next up, we'll use a partial fraction decomposition to break this into two parts. So I won't do all the details of this. There are a bunch of videos on YouTube um, where partial fractions are explored. So if you need to review that, I'll let you look at those. So suffice it to say, we get one over one minus two times t minus one over one minus t. So that means we've got this rational function form of our generating function. Okay, so let's bring that form to the top and then we're actually ready to move towards the end. On the last board, we determined that a closed form for our generating function for our x sequence was given by one over one minus two t minus one over one minus t. Now we'll expand each of these as geometric series. That'll give us a closed form for x sub n. So let's see what we get for that. So this first guy has a geometric series form where the common ratio is equal to two times t. So that's gonna give us the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of two times t to the n like that. But for this one, the common ratio will be t. We've got a minus sign, so that's gonna give us minus. The sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of t to the n. Now we'll put those two sums together, leaving us with the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of two to the n minus one times t to the n. Now comparing this coefficient right here, which is the value of our sequence, with this coefficient right here, we see that we've found a closed form for our sequence x sub n. So let's summarize that here. We have x sub n equals two to the n minus one. And this is gonna be true for all n bigger than or equal to zero. So notice just checking the first couple of cases, you see that we are in line with what we get with this recursion over here. Okay, so now let's look at our y sub n. Now y sub n is gonna be x sub n squared plus two to the n plus two. So hopefully this is a perfect square and hopefully that's easy to see given this form for x sub n. So let's see what we've got here. We've got two to the n minus one quantity squared plus two to the n plus two. So multiplying this out, we'll get two to the two n minus two times two to the n and then plus one plus, then I'm gonna maybe rewrite this a little bit as four times two to the n. I can split that two squared times two to the n apart. Now we can combine this blue underlined term with this blue underlined term to see that we get two to the two n plus two times two to the n plus one. But that's a nice perfect square binomial. In fact, we can factor this as two to the n plus one quantity squared. So we've ended up with our sequence y sub n is always a perfect square. And that's a good place to stop.